Hey folks, today I'm going to be showing you how to use a new app that will help keep your Mac's desktop clean as a whistle. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey everyone, today we're talking about an app called Unclutter. All right, let's go over the money thing first. It's a free app to try if you decide you want to buy it. It is $9.99, the license is for a computer. So if you have multiple Macs, you need multiple licenses. Let me show you how to use this cool little app. All right, everyone, as you can see here, I have purposefully cluttered up my desktop right now. I've got a bunch of files and folders, documents and photos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this app to clean that up. Uh, but ultimately, first, I'm going to actually show you one of the secondary tools that's built into Unclutter, which I think for some of you may actually be a bigger selling point than the part that keeps your desktop clean. Follow me here, okay? So once you have Unclutter running on your Mac, the way that you can access it, or perhaps I should say one of the ways that you can access it, is by putting your cursor at the very top part of your screen and then pull down with two fingers. You can create custom uh, hotkeys in order to access this. I'll show you that in just a minute. So uh, by default, when you pull down, you'll see that we have these three different windows. The first one is your clipboard history, which I think is actually possibly a better feature than the main feature that's here within this app. The second one is where we're gonna end up dragging and dropping all of those files in order to hide them. And basically what Unclutter is going to do is it's going to move all of those documents to a different location. For some of you, it might be a really good idea to link this up with Dropbox because a lot of people have important stuff on their desktops. Maybe they don't need it every day, but they do tend to have a lot of important stuff on their desktop. So just know that if you wanted to have it I'll sync to a file that was located within Dropbox, you can. I'll show you how to use it in a minute. And then finally over here on the right-hand side, we have a feature that maybe some of you will like. Personally, I don't really use it because I use the notepad that comes with my Mac. But as you can see here, we do have an additional notepad that we can use. If you don't think that you're going to use it, you can hide it. I'll show you how in just a moment. Let's start off with talking about the clipboard history. Your clipboard history contains anything you copy and paste from one location to another. This includes anything from text to photos, hyperlinks, etc. So if you're the kind of person who is in a profession where you have to constantly type the same kinds of things over and over, this tool is a massive time saver. Just type out whatever it is that you need access to, and it does not matter what software you use to compose it, then copy it as you normally would, and thanks to the favorites feature represented by the little star icon, you can really easily have access to this content anytime you need it. Now let's talk about this files feature. And at this point, one of the things I do want to definitely show you is that you can move these windows around. You can also resize them. So if I want files to take up a little bit more space, I can put my cursor between these windows and I can drag it to the left or right. Also, I can move them. So if I just click up here at the top, I can drag it down. And so now if I had like files that were here towards the top of my screen, of course, now I have access to all of them. So at this point, basically what I can do is just take everything that you see here, highlight it and drag it and drop it right here. And as you can see, it disappears from my desktop. And when I go ahead and close this window, look, it's clean. Now, if I ever need to access those files, all I do is I go back to where we were, go to the top of the screen, drag down with two fingers, and there is everything. So let's go over how to uh, access some of the settings for this app. There's a couple of different ways that you can get there. You can hit this little orange, if you notice when I kind of move it, there's this little orange tab right there. And if I put my cursor over it, there's the gear. You'll also see that it does install into the menu bar up here on my Mac, so I can go into preferences there as well. We have a couple of different things here. The first thing I would recommend is that you tell it to launch at startup for fairly obvious reasons and check for updates. Now, if you don't want to access it by putting your cursor at the top and scrolling down, as you can see here, you do have pretty good control over how you access it. You can also create a hotkey, which I decided to do. So what I decided to do is I just think files, I think at the letter F. So now on my computer, if I hit option F, boom, everything comes down. 
This is also likely to be a very appealing feature to any of you out there who tend to run apps in full screen and also need access to files. This way you can access them without having to take that app out of full screen mode. Now let's go over to some of the other things here. So you can see here under files that by default, it's storing it in its default location. But if you want to change it to anything else, you can basically point it wherever you want. The next one we have here is notes. Same deal, you can choose where it stores that information. Under the clipboard preferences, what this is specifically talking about is anything that you want it to ignore. So if you have private data, maybe you have a financial program in your computer and you don't want anything that's copied from that uh, to be able to be accessible in the clipboard history, you can drag the application into this list and it will know to ignore it whenever you copy something from within that particular app. Another one I think a lot of people might use would be your web browser. And then we have panels. So if you don't use the notes feature, you can uncheck that. And then that way, when you go to access it, you have a little bit more uh, real estate to work with. And then finally, we have appearance, which will let you switch between light mode and dark mode, just like that. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, I do appreciate it if you hit that little thumbs up like button, and I will see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America, class dismissed.